Welcome back, everybody. We appreciate you being here. Today's video is a good one. But before we get into the content that we have planned out for you guys today, I want to let everybody know if you're watching this before September 19th, 2020, which is next Saturday, we are having our next free webinar then. So I want you guys there. It's going to be an awesome event. I've been putting this research together for the last two or three months, kind of sitting on it, which you know is hard for me because I like to talk about what I'm doing on my story and tweet about it and share it. So I've been working on this behind the scenes and that's why I'm so excited to share it. So it's completely free. VIP members be there. Non-members be there. Of course, we're going to have an offer for those that aren't a part of our team at the end, but everyone's going to leave there learning something new. So make sure you sign up. Link is in the description below wherever you're listening or watching this video. So today we're talking about savings and kind of going off of one of our previous episodes, taking savings now like a step further into actually investing and where to be putting your money going into the new year. It's a common question that I'm getting on Instagram and on Twitter. Like, what am I looking at going into 2021? Because we're getting towards the end of the year and that's what people always like, to, you know, the years for some reason are buzzwords for people. They always like to set goals at the beginning of the year and stuff like that. So I think as we get closer to January, you're going to have more people saying, where do I want to put my free cash or where do I want to put my money going into the new year. If COVID hasn't swallowed it all up already. Well, you know, it's interesting because there are some statistics. Again, this isn't like, this is it for sure. We're not going to say anything that we talk about today is like, this is, you know, unless we're talking about like the sky is blue, right? Is it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So <laughs> nothing is 100%, of course. But some of the st statistics are saying, at least here in the United States, that savings are actually going up. So people are saving some of that stimulus check, some of the extra money that they're making from home. Listen, there's a lot of people finessing the system right now. And that's not what today's video is about. But just to touch on that for a second, like there's people that I've heard online, watch, I've seen it online, working two jobs and still collecting unemployment because of the way they're being paid. So there's a lot of people finessing free money out of the system, which I don't think is going to be a good thing long term. And they're sitting on that cash. At the same time, we have the Fed printing more money, right? More quantitative easing was announced last week, like Matt was telling us about. Yep. So that you would think, as we've talked about before, will devalue the dollars. So not only are people not spending it, not circulating it, they're sitting on it and more of it is becoming available. So it's clearly going to devalue it. So it's a common, like I said, common question. Where are we going to invest in 2021? Where are we going to put our money going forward? So have you had any conversations with the traders in your coaching calls about where they're putting their free money, including their trading account? Are they putting money back into their trading account, into the speculation side of things there? Are they looking to get into real estate? Where do you find some of the people that you've talked to? It's honestly all over the place. I would say a fair share of them are definitely putting um, money into their trading account as they can afford to do so. But there are some that are into real estate. There's one who was into real estate, but kind of, I think is getting out of it a little bit. Not yep. sure exactly what his plans are. Yep. There are others that are using their trading to try and invest in their own businesses. There is a guy that I'm thinking of who is using his trading account to kind of get the jump start for funding for his other business We've ideas. We've talked about that. Yeah. So, so I think that people are kind of all over the place a little bit. Um, where do you think of the ones that you've seen? Where makes the most sense to you just initially before we get into some of the notes that I have? Well, my gut response would be that if you're a good trader and you've proven it to yourself, your money should be there because you know you're going to have returns. Not all of it by any means. That's exactly but right. <laughs> Perfect question. Perfect statement. That's where I want us to go because that's where the questions, I should say, come from is, okay, I've been putting money into my trading account. The trading account's getting pretty sizable. I have my savings. Most of these people at that point should have at least six months savings aside, right? Yep. Now what do I do with the free money? And even before that, I have some people that want to diversify. Let's just use easy numbers. If they want to put $100 a month or $100 a week into their trading account from their paycheck as they learn to trade and they're still working, they will say, you know what, instead of the 100 some people would say, if that's the number I'm going to do per week, divide it. 50% is going to go into my 401k or 50% is going to go into this index fund. And then the other 50% of that check will go into the trading account. And I'll do that every week, 50-50. So they're looking for diversification actually along the way while they're still trading. So I agree with you. I do. That's what I did, right? And it worked for me. Yep. So I think if you have the skills and you can pay the bills and you can grow an account, you should be pumping money, extra money back into that account. So if you're working, which most people are or should be, you should be taking that extra income, funding your skills to see if you can actually grow that. But for those looking for diversification, do you have any, before you and I started dating, do you have any experience with people with 401ks? Like, was that a thing for your family? Was that a thing for your parents? Um, I feel like your family was way more into real estate than 
traditional. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely members of my family who have a 401k, you know, because if you have a <clears throat> traditional nine to five job, your job typically sets that up for you. Sure. So I do know, like my mom has one. I would, I think my dad does, but I'm not a hundred percent. You never had one from the jobs that you had before no. you started this with me. No, I was offered one back in the day. I was a hostess at a steakhouse and they, and were, they were like, doing 401k. yeah, they wow. were like, we can set up a 401k for you. And I feel like, like, that's just OD. Yeah. I was just like, bro, I'm making like, I don't even know. It was right. like nine, 10 bucks an hour. I'm like, that's not enough to put. No, no like, I need that money to live at that point. If you're yeah. making that little amount of money, you need that money to live. You're not thinking about a 401k. Right. And then like when you left the way that like you had to transfer the 401k and it honestly just seemed like such a headache because I was like, I'm not going to be at this job for even more. How long did I last there? Like two or three months, if that. Right. right. So I was like, I'm not getting into all this headache bullshit for nothing. Right. No, that makes sense. So the 401k wasn't really a thing for you. What's your family's experience with real estate? I know your pet. Right. Yeah. So my pappy actually has, I don't know how long he's been into real estate, but obviously as long as I've been born, he's been buying, flipping houses, then renting them out, um, to obviously to other tenants and stuff. His old house that he used to live in, he literally built it from the ground up and then lived in it for many, many years. And then. So let's talk about that for a second. Like the pros and cons of that. Yeah. Real estate kind of seems like a, to me, a headache. You know, you really have yeah. to love it. And I think you got to love working with other people. Yeah. <clears throat> I think you got to love working with your hands, especially if you're trying to flip stuff. Right. Or you got to know the connections to have the contractors to come in and be able to make that happen on the cheap for you. Because your margins are, like, let's face it, your margins in real estate, as far as an investment, um, are not as great. And I feel like you take on a lot of risk, even in, compared to just buying a stock in a good company. Right. You know what I mean? I almost would rather buy stocks than I would buy real estate because you don't know. You know, yeah. especially if you got to find tenants. I've always been turned off by that. Yeah. So I don't know too much about the tenant process from my perspective. It didn't seem like they ever had issues finding That's tenants what everybody or says, keeping tenants. You know, but I always have my side of the coin, which is like, yeah, but what if you do? Right. Right. I think that from what I saw, the heart, the hardest thing was at least the way my pappy did it was he always found not the worst house on the market, but he, he's a guy like and you he fixed where him up. He, he assesses risk reward. He's like, okay, where's the location? What is the actual price? For low risk. How much do I think I can put into this? How much do I think I can sell it for? Because in his case, he's a plumber. So him being a plumber, his ex-wife, who was his partner at the time, she's a painter. My dad's an electrician. So he was able to pull together a bunch of resources to get it done, to make it a cheaper process for him. So right. he was able to better assess the deals. But there was even houses sometimes that I would go along and help with. Like some of these houses were really bad, nasty. Like I would be scrubbing literally right. the so, baseboards I mean, like of talk- houses to make them nicer. Like yeah. it was a project just not and then some of them i think the house i'm speaking about he ended up reselling anyway because um i don't remember exactly what happened with it but plans changed mid like he planned on buying it you know renting it out and then after it got finished he was like i'm just gonna sell it so weird yeah you have to be really knowledgeable in not only is this a good bang for my buck but you have to be knowledgeable on the other end of the work that i'm gonna put into it because most people like you and I, if we did that, we aren't really that handy. We'd hire people, right. you know, and that obviously is going to cost even money. more money. Right. So it's a weird relationship when I don't want to linger on real estate too long, but it, it, cause we can come back to it, but it's a weird relationship there with your time versus your money, your money versus your money, your money versus your time. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Because in real, like you said, we could do the work, but we wouldn't do it well. We could hire someone that's going to cost more money, but save us time. There's a lot of sides to weigh. And like you said, the risk reward is still something you have to consider even with just buying the property or whatever you decide to do. So definitely not a, um, investment that just anybody can make you that's the safest way in it like you, you in have it. to yes, love exactly you, you have to have some burning passion because underneath real estate to really understand because you got to dive in and know so many different topics well here's why i wanted to talk about that and i'm why i led with that because i'm looking at bankrate.com and what they say are the best investments to make in 2020 and rental housing is one of the things on there So like they actually are kind of advocating for people to get into this. And I Mm -hmm. just think that it shouldn't be in the same group as what they have here, which are high yield savings accounts, CDs, money market accounts, treasury securities. We're going to talk about all this in a second. Index funds. All of those are so much different than real estate. They don't require you to scrub a baseball. Real estate is a physical. like so different. So we're going to, for this conversation, just because we're not in real estate and this isn't a real estate channel, we're not going to 
group that in with the best investments to make in 2020. You know where I think, and I sit, I think, with you in the idea that the best investment to make in 2020 for sure is in yourself, right? And I was the, just going to say that. I was like, let's course, see if he says yourself. That's what I said. We're on the same page. We know that. That's always what it is. It's always in yourself. But on top of that. So people listening are like, how do I shove all my money into my ears? <clears throat> no, but like on top of that, how do you invest in yourself for me? It's of course the constant learning, new courses, videos, yeah. things like that. You can invest in yourself with time to just listen and learn new things from videos and books, but also invest in yourself by putting the money back into the trading account or putting it back into something where you have more control. And that's kind of what my beef is with all of these things on the list today. Because this is a popular article. People look at Bankrate and they're like, yo, this is a legit source. I trust what they say. This is where I want to invest my money. No one's talking about the idea of putting your money to work for you with Forex trading or with day trading as a whole. It's getting more popular. And of course, it's speculative. You have to group that into speculation. It isn't like a solid investment like when you buy a mutual fund and you just sit there. You do have to work a little bit more. And of course, that's a difference between day trading and this stuff here where you just put the money here and you let it sit. But there, you have way more control and way more room for growth. Of course, more room for risk. Of course. But there's way more room for growth. So the people that are interested in these things, I think, want more growth. They're willing to take more risk. Of course, this is what they're going to say, if the risk is calculated. That's all. So when we talk about a couple of these, like high-yield savings accounts, you were just introduced to that in the last couple of years because of me, right? You didn't really know about those before? I've known about them, but I never had like an account opened or anything like that. You used to be able to consider them almost an investment. Like you could get to, when I started, 2%. Some of them were offering 3%. I could have probably done more research and found higher percentage. Yeah. But over time, that interest rate that they were giving you for putting your money there has gone down. So it's actually not worth it to even put your money in some of these high interest savings accounts. The only one that I'm using for us right now is the one from Goldman Sachs because that one is where we put the money that we need for taxes. It's not even really like our emergency fund. Like I have our emergency right. fund in other things. In still low interest online bank accounts or in cash. So it's like these aren't investments. Putting your money at Wells Fargo getting 0.002% or at Marcus with Goldman Sachs at 0.6% right now, those aren't investments. 0.6% interest is not beating inflation. You're not gaining anything leaving your money there. Right. So you can't even in my mind group it in. But I find a lot of people thinking that if they just put money in there, that savings is an investment. And it's not. In, savings is separate from investing. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. So for my personal experiences with that, I've always known about it because my when I actually had my first bank account set up, I was too young. So they called it a happy savers account. <laughs> and they obviously it was more child geared. But in that way, they explained to me what interest was and how that works in savings accounts. Did they explain? Do you remember how they explained it to you? I'm just curious. Oh my God, no. I was like 11. Okay. I was so young. I just remember it called a happy savers account. <laughs> got it, got and it, it was like, I was like, yay. But what <laughs> then extended my knowledge in that, for whatever reason, as a child, I was always so fascinated with the lottery. And people that won, maybe because my pappy also won the lottery a couple times. Nothing hmm. huge, but... Um, I've always was just so fascinated in it because I knew that so many people that won the lottery ended up going bankrupt. Yeah. So I was always like, how, like, what are they doing wrong with their money? And right. that's where I would go down into the tunnel, um, of like people just would put it in a bank account that wouldn't do anything for them. And then they'd constantly spend, but they would be thinking that it would be earning them money because it would say something like a 0 0.02 interest rate. And people that don't understand money would be like, oh, that means my money is making me money. Right but it's not. No, it's not. So just against inflation, it's not. So, right. and that's where I feel like a lot of these types of articles almost take advantage of people. You know what I mean? You For find sure. like, especially because of where I know you come from, which is like central PA, not small town, but fairly small. If somebody starts yeah. doing something, like you said, then other people are going to be like, what are you doing? Oh, you're doing this. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow your advice. Everybody starts doing it. Yep. All of a sudden there's no new ideas, no open-mindedness there, and it might not be the best option. And then that's easily controllable by these banks and companies that want to, you know well, what I, I mean? That's, it's it's a, good. I was just gonna say, cause as humans, I feel like we're very herd. Like Always. everybody, oh, we know that nobody Tribe wants is... to actually work for themselves and figure shit out. No. They're all just like, Oh, you're oh, you doing that and that works. Let me try it. Give me the shortcut. Can I do it too? Right. I don't want to put in the work, but I see you doing this. So results. I'm just going to do that. Right. It's like, mm. so you have to also remember what I was going to say is that the banks do bad things to people sometimes. Like we know Wells Fargo got caught doing a lot of bad stuff. They pay fines. The banks, it's just a weird situation. They have to just pay fines for the bad stuff that they do. They don't ever have to fire anybody. There's no ever repercussions that they can't do anything anymore, can't take on more money. No, they just pay money. 
but they make way more. So it doesn't even matter. But because the average person sees the word million or billion, they get, oh, okay. They don't even think about how much money it actually is. Right. Yeah, it might be $20 million in a fine to Wells Fargo. You know they made $20 million last month, last week, whatever it might be. You know what I'm saying? Like you just, the scale is very hard for people to comprehend. And to the other ideas here, like money market accounts, which are very similar to um, high interest savings accounts, just a different format of where you're putting the money. You have CDs, which actually lock up the money. So I hate those in my opinion because you're guaranteeing yourself a low interest rate, which normally is not beating inflation. And you have to lock the money in the CD for a certain period of time. You can't take it out for most of them. Some of them now you can, but for most, that was like the way CDs were different is that you would give the money to the bank or whoever issued the certificate of deposit. You would not get your money back until five years, four years, whatever the term is, and you would get a guaranteed interest rate, but it's low. So now with inflation going up and with the Fed saying, you know, everybody's talking about how the Fed says, we'll let inflation go, we'll let inflation go. The CDs, the savings, account, they're going to get crushed. Everybody's yeah. going to, all the money that people put there is going to get crushed. Same thing with treasury bonds, which have low yield, which means low interest, low return. That low yield is going to just get crushed by inflation. So when you think about it, you don't want to ever, in my opinion, <clears throat> recommend full speculation to people where they put all of their extra money into trading and nothing else. You definitely need some diversification. But I think the diversification comes from areas other than these index funds where you're paying high fees or these savings accounts and CDs where you're not making any money. Because like they want you to put your money where it's going to make them money. Right, because even with these index funds, I mean, exactly. They're charging you fees. They're making money on the fees and they're not even beating the market a lot of the time. So it's like why, why would you let brokers. these guys, almost, almost. Why yeah. would you let these guys trade for you? They're making trading decisions. They're investing in companies on longer term trades. Just because it's not a day trade like you see me doing, it's no different. They're investing in companies. I trade forex that's the difference but you're paying them a lot in fees to be in these funds to be there with those guys some of these hedge funds you know what i mean they charge crazy two percent twenty percent right two percent management or two percent off the top something like that then twenty percent of profits two percent management fee twenty percent of profits that's some i think typical. but on the other hand it's like if you were investing your money mm -hmm. and then you were the person on the opposite taking spectrum, the money where say like you worked for a fund, you know, and you're the actual trader. It's like, you would want to be compensated for, for sure. that. Cause in that point of view, you'd be like, well, how is this person just getting to but I think, give their money to me and do nothing? Not no, have for sure. any worries, for you know? Sure. But I think what's happened is it's just been taken advantage of. Absolutely. Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you think about it, to just backtrack a little bit to keep us on the same role here, these really don't give you any control. They're locking up your money. They're not giving you a great return. You're not really beating inflation. And like, again, just mean to say it again, just no control. You got to look at other options. So what we can talk about with everybody is what we've done. So first, I think we should talk about the metals, the silver, the platinum, the gold that we've been buying, because I think that that does offer me, number one, peace of mind that I'm not invested in the dollar. And even from your perspective, I want to know what that makes you feel like as far as like our future and our money, because you're not an economics major, just like me. We're not like the smartest economist this side of the Mississippi River, but I want to know what does it make you feel? knowing that you're a little bit more diversified every day and especially more than you were the last year or the year before that into something that's separate from the dollar. I would just say prepared. That's a good word. Just because it doesn't, in all actuality, does having metals or anything like that make me feel any different on a day-to-day -day basis? No. No, absolutely not. I really don't even think about it that often. But when you're asking me to think about it, it just makes me feel prepared in the sense where it's like, who knows if shit were to ever get to the point where we need metals or if metals continue going up in price like they have, it's like, why not be involved? Well, because you, you, you could see it coming. That's like, the best I, thing. Right? I, lo I look at it as just like the precious moments, you know, yeah. that my aunt has got me sure. since I was a baby that I still have. They might not have any value now, but mm -hmm. say that they did, you know, say that it's proven to, that they have value. It's like a collectible almost is how I view our coins. Got it. It's like, we're collecting something that has a higher chance of being worth something more in the future. Well, it's got history on its side. Right. Over time, it's always gone up. Right. It's like, it, it's something like proven in yes. a way. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's what a lot of people feel. I mean, the next step for us is to be buying it in the point where we're buying enough to put it in a vault <clears throat> so it doesn't need to be stored here you know what I mean and that's why I've never bought any of those collector's coins because like it is I think different than a, in a collectible in the sense that yeah 
from the research I've done, the people who say like silver collectible coins and stuff like that, gold coins. I think it's a collectible without it even being considered a collectible. <laughs> right. But what I'm getting at is that those actual collector's coins are not right. a good investment no, for people that are looking. No, because you're just paying for the pretty design on exactly. it. Exactly. You're, yeah. you're trying to get as much of that pure silver, pure gold for as cheap as possible. That's the goal. You know what I'm saying? And I really do think that as long as you're not storing it in your house, right? Which having some in your house is fine. I think like a couple of months of savings in metals is a good idea. That's what we've done. But past that, it's too heavy. It's too risky. It's much better to save up the money, put the 10, 20 grand, whatever it takes to get it in a vault, get that set up. And then every time you want to chunk it off, 20 grand, boom, 20 grand in gold, put it over there. Whatever that buys me at the time, put it over there. 20 grand in silver, boom, put that over there. Hold it in my vault in Singapore. Hold it in my vault in Switzerland, wherever it is. You know what I'm saying? That is what I think we need to be pushing to people going into the next couple of years as far as an investment because that's what I'm looking into for us. As long as we keep making money, we keep growing, we're going to have to keep moving money around. And that's why we make these videos to share with everybody on that experience. So metals are important. Let's talk about crypto. What do you think, what word comes to mind when you think about having some Bitcoin? Because you know we just took profits. We talked about that. Everybody knows we took some off the table. We still have some. But we did take some profits because we were buying from when it was 4000 earlier this year. So we needed to take some off when it was around eleven. So my pure gut just tells me that it's almost inevitable for our world. I'm not going to say necessarily United States because I'm who knows if we're going to be first. But <clears throat> in the world for there to be a digital currency. Yep. It just I makes agree. too much sense. Because everything else is We digital. continue evolving in right. technology. So why would we just stop? Right. Doesn't make sense. You Even watch- with our money, you know, like look at the way that money has already kind of had its own little evolution. You know, you start with physical, well, back then, I guess it was coins, you know, then you start with like a paper money, you know, then you have cash. Okay. Well, now you're able to put your money in a bank. So now you can write a check. You don't even need that cash. Oh, you don't want to carry your checkbook anymore. Well, now we have this little plastic thing that you can just swipe wherever you want. Oh, your swiper gets a little bad on your card reading. Well, now we have chips in the card that you can just tap it. You don't even need to scan it. So you're saying it. we're getting further and further away from ever even seeing the cash, let alone yeah. seeing the real money, which goes back to what you just said, which is the coins, because the coins are the only real money. Right. But we're so far away from that now. Absolutely. You're saying it's no, it's just, we're just going to keep going further. So in relation to Bitcoin, do yeah. I think that Bitcoin is going to be the holy grail of digital currencies? Honestly, I want to say no, because I feel like Bitcoin is the first one. And you the know? first one never it's, wins. It's the first one that everybody, like that even your parents will have heard of, you know, but it's these other smaller coins that it's like people are still like, oh, there's other coins even besides Bitcoin. It's still just not as knowledgeable. And because Bitcoin, I think, is kind of like being like the guinea pig in, the, in essence, that another coin is going to be able to be derived and take all the learnings from Bitcoin and then just dominate the digital currency. You might not be wrong. I could be way off. Yeah, but you might not be wrong. It's not a terrible idea. We know how early adopters normally don't last. You know what I mean? It's always the second and third guy that come in and learn from them, like you said, and then use their mistakes. I just feel like what Bitcoin does for you now is it secures you to make sure, as long as you have some of it, like Adam Curry, that guy that was on Joe Rogan's show a couple days ago, said you're going to need at least one Bitcoin, right? Yeah, well, I mean, and you have to look at other countries too, like Japan, well, for instance. Say, looking, they're already paying in Bitcoin at places. Look so, at Akon City, right? The city Akon is building in Africa. It's yeah. all going to be run off a of cryptocurrency. Right, but then to play the other side of what exactly what I just said, <laughs> sure. Bitcoin could very well be it because if another coin tried to overrule whatever the word is of Bitcoin, you know, people might not well, trust it as the, much the because Bitcoin right now already has such a brand behind it. Well, what it, would happen is the market cap would grow, which means the availability of it and how many people are buying it would grow. And if a, if some coin had a bigger market cap, like more money invested into it than Bitcoin, then it would be technically bigger than Bitcoin. But Bitcoin has always had the biggest market cap. But and I'm speaking like, pure from like a marketing standpoint right now, where if you were just to hear it on the street, yeah. people are more trusting of Bitcoin than, than if, anything than else. if you hear this other coin that oh, you've yeah. never even heard of. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, that's and the, because other countries got. are already paying with it, mm-hmm. that might have a leg up on people to be like, well, why are we going to try and create this new coin when we already have Bitcoin? It's right. already working in some countries. The biggest beef with Bitcoin, to bring it back to what we were talking about, is that it kind of looks like these to me, where I have to put my money in something that almost is speculative and unregulated. Like you have to do it yeah. with brokers or um, like Coinbase. They're an American company, I believe, based in San Francisco. But if you want to trade it with like Binance, Binance.us, like 
these brokers, they're not truly regulated yet. The government is still learning how to regulate this stuff from all over the world. It's very difficult. So to be invested in it is very still, I think, speculative to me. And I yeah. like to separate my speculative bucket from my investment bucket. Like I separate my investment and speculative from my savings. They're three separate buckets. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You have to look at the money in them differently. They all have different fill levels. They can all go to different levels. But I think Bitcoin, because it's not backed by anything, other than the fact that people agree to use it. We do have governments trying to get into it. Futures trading is using it now. We, we know that, right? Like it's becoming more popular for sure. But that doesn't mean it's somewhere where I could see you saying, hey, today put your money in it and in 10 years you'll have more money. Yeah. It's You can't guarantee that. I think we would wait until there's a digital currency that is backed by something. And I definitely think it has the potential to be backed by gold. Right. That I would really make the do. Most like sense. that's just kind of what my gut's it telling me. It does make me. a lot of sense. It would be cool. And I feel like that could be something that would the Fed would introduce a Fed coin backed by gold. Yeah. And, and, and that will shoot the price of gold up to 10,000, 20,000. And that's where the coin will come out. And, and if the you're, coin will if come you're out thinking and in the sense of where you do plan ahead, you know, Bro, typically so dope. we don't think of our government ever doing things like that. We I would think take of, a quick 10 X on our money. A quick. Okay. We think of our government as being very reactive, never like actually planning out mm -hmm. what they want to do. Mm -hmm. But what if we're so wrong? And right. what if they do actually plan? If they did plan, it would make so much sense to take like um to remove gold being backed or the dollar being backed by gold it when they right did. Now. I know. Yeah. It's not, but right. that makes sense because if you were then to want to back a digital currency by gold, you can't just do that switch in one day and be like, oh guys, hey, we're not going to back the dollar anymore. We're now going to back this digital currency and we're just going to do this little switch. That doesn't make sense to so many people. So what you would have to do is, hey, we're going to not back the dollar by gold anymore. We're going to remove the gold standard. And now gold's just going to be its own thing. The dollar's free floating. Let that happen for years so that everybody knows gold has no attachment to it anymore. That way then it's like a new thing. It's not just a switch. It's like a transition period for humans to accept it more. Maybe. Peter Schiff would like that idea, I think. Maybe. He, he probably he don't like Bitcoin, but if they backed a crypto by gold, he might like that. I think it would be a good idea. I think it would be a way to get even more people on board with it and want to invest in it. I like it. I like that idea because I, I don't think, know the details about any no, of the no, words no, coming out would, of my mouth right now, but it sounds great. But I think what it would do is really increase the value of gold. If everybody started using that, especially if the Fed had to do yeah. that and set that and up. And then gold's value would actually increase, not just well, because gold, the dollar is decreasing. Everybody says that gold's value right now is not correct. Same thing with silver. Everybody says silver is super undervalued right now. I'm hoping they're right. How I do don't you know. even determine the value of something if we can't all agree on a currency? Well, you're determining the value of it in select currencies. And it's always in the dollar right now because the dollar is the US res the world reserve currency. So that's why it's always in dollars. That's why oil is priced in dollars. It's the US. We made I a deal. Think, I think money's taboo. We made a deal with the leaders of other countries to use the dollar. That was the deal. So what that allowed us to do is to be this superpower that we are now, to build into this nation that has so much debt tied around the world that it's almost too big to fail, just like Enron, the company in the tech boom that they said was too big to fail. It still failed. They all still, I think guys went to jail for that. So we're just going to take these off. Too big, too big to fail is not really a thing. So I feel like the idea that the government taking on all the debt and doing what it did to become this power since, like you said, when we got off the gold standard, because that's when this all started. That The 70s into the 2001 tech uh, bubble was just a ridiculous bull market. And that was right after we came off the gold standard. Then we popped in 2001. Then we popped a little bit more in 2008. Now it's 2020. We might pop again. At some point, they're going to be able to turn back and maybe even say, like you said, look at this. It went crazy once we took it off gold. We need to get it back to gold. We got to get back to gold. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the price of gold $10,000 US dollars per ounce or one Fed dollar, one Fed digital coin, something like that. But why do so we also- could tie them all together. I think that would be the transition. That would be the easiest way to do it. Tie them all together. Do you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That could be. But why- are we so naive to think that we're going to be the country that remains in higher power? Probably not, bro. China's... You know, like, like, when in history has that 
ever it hasn't. happened. We're overdue. It do- we're right. about to, we're dude, we're long overdue. We're about it, to be pregnant. It doesn't. We're and, pregnant. and people live through it. Like everyone, <clears throat> it just reminds me of the conversation. Like, I feel like Ryan would play the other side of this, my brother, mm-hmm. you know, where he would be like, oh, like not in our lifetime, blah, 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 blah. But it's Shout like, out to Ryan. right. But in history, when empires have fallen and power is, whoa. And they fall quick. Changed. They it fall happens quick. in somebody's lifetime. Humans are alive during that. Yeah. So who's to say it won't be your lifetime? Right. It's foolish. Yeah. I feel like the other thing about it is, like I said, we're overdue for it for sure. And on top of that, you have China, which is partnered basically. China owns everything. Yeah. They, they're how, buying how their way. How do we even th- say that we are the most powerful country well, when China owns everything? I think they're just laying in wait. Something's going to happen. Like, again, a lot of people say this is going to, we're going to war. You know what I'm saying? So if we end up at war with them, and I'm I not, said I'm that in the we, very beginning when coronavirus started, that I think this ends in a war. Well, that would that would be what the cycle says, just like World War II. That's about I don't the time. know what the cycles are, but Ray Dalio <laughs> explains it in his book, and he talks about how like we're going through the same kind of period that they went through right before they went into World War II. I mean, there are some weird similarities. China is doing something to the Uyghurs that Hitler did to the Jews. They're rounding them up. The and who? Put, the Uyghurs. They're the Muslim population in china oh i didn't know that yeah that's the people whose organs they harvest and they put them in concentration camps and like it's it's for real for real like all over google it uyghur death camps for real for real and that just reminds me reported and we do business with china and that's fine we know that that's out there and we do business with them like it's no problem that's what it's like in history class when you're learning about the holocaust and stuff at least for me my mind goes to how can other humans around the world be alive during this time and allow this to happen but it's like look at our time right now we know that it's going on but, but okay, what can we do not about to get it political look at it, that is exact hitler had like a 23 percent approval rating all the way up until it led to he popped it was just that people were ex- doing exactly what you said Oh, it's not that bad. It's fine. It's not that bad. Every time he did something that was more radical, oh, it's not that bad. It's fine. It's weird. It but, is weird because it's like we know about it. It's happening right now. How but long? What? Look, the. I mean, yeah. And yeah. And look at that. Look at how planned things were then. You know what I'm saying? And how well orchestrated things were then mm-hmm. back before the internet and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? How right. How meticulous you had to be. What do you know what I mean? Do we think? I don't know. It, it does bring up some good questions. But to circle back to investments going into next year investments yes. yeah yeah but we were talking about bitcoin we talked yeah. about the metal and again i feel like they are separate than speculation just because well crypto it's tough and that's why we don't have a ton of money in crypto but metals are separate from speculation because you're, you're playing with time you're playing with something that's proven to work with you over the long period of time nothing else is that proven no hedge fund managers returns like gold and silver nobody no one's that guaranteed and i'm looking for guarantees because i speculate so much with my trading account so when I have all the speculation over here in this one bucket, I need guarantees. So another investment for me, you know, I think what people should be looking into is life insurance because you can get guarantees from these insurance companies that are backed by hundreds of years of returns, hundreds of years of paying out to clients. So that's pretty good. You know what I mean? That's not, you don't find many companies lasting that long. These companies are billion dollar companies. So you can get it with a reputable company. And it's a, again, a guarantee separate from the stock market, separate from separate from your speculative trading, separate from everything else. And it's still a guarantee. So no, is it 20% a year? No, but you should be getting that with your speculation, right? That's where I'm going to get my money there. I need my guarantees and my investments everywhere else to be low risk, as close to a guarantee as I can get for a return that definitely at least beats inflation. And with life insurance, you can do that, especially if you let the cash value build, then you don't even need to take it as a direct payment. Like, you don't need to take the cash value tax-free. You can let it sit there, take a loan against it. We've talked about that before. Mm -hmm. There's so much more flexibility there, again, based on guarantees. Guess what? They pay dividends. If the dividends pay, you're going to make more. It's great, but you're guaranteed. So I just look at the guarantees. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then that makes us safe because now you're getting yourself diversified where you have a, a savings bucket to cover your expenses to keep you alive, to keep you growing. Then you have your speculative bucket where we... Trade, we grow, we go for those 20% returns, right? Then you have your investments, which I want to be as low risk, guarantee as possible, separate from every market and diversified from each other as possible. And this isn't financial advice. This is just what we do. Then you have the metals separate from that because that's a separate market tied to nothing but time. And then, of course, a little crypto just because of the future, what we think the digital future is. But again, which crypto coin? I can't tell you. So I can't put too much money into Bitcoin because Bitcoin might be wrong. Could be Litecoin. You don't know what's going to happen in five years. And if it happened, you'd be like, oh shit, it happened. What am I going to do? Well, you were wrong. You could have been not wrong. Like, I'm not going to be. I'm just not going to be wrong. It's always about calculating the risk. 
do I want to be wrong with this decision? Would I rather just be right and not make as much? I definitely would rather just be right, guarantee myself something, than be wrong and make nothing. You know? Yeah. Past that, going deeper, trying to move money around as you become more and more wealthy, I think you do eventually get into other things. Maybe like real estate. Maybe like jewelry even i've seen people buying platinum watches and platinum stuff now because of the price of platinum i've been watching some videos about that um not diamonds diamonds are manipulated so diamonds themselves are not really a good investment um but other than that i think the the best place to invest this year going into next year is in yourself more courses more online i mean there's harvard professors that are teaching courses right now for $500, less than that, the same price as our course. Mm -hmm. And you can learn from someone that taught at Harvard where people paid $60,000 a year to go learn from them. You can get it for 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, whatever it is. It's a crazy time to be alive. So the best investment is always into yourself, whether it's for our courses, for the Harvard courses, for somebody else's, that is always gonna be the best investment. Learning a new skill, making yourself more financially literate, becoming woke, so to speak, in this technological age that we're living through. Do you have any other ideas? Any other investment topics that you want to make sure we touch on? I think I covered all of us. I mean, don't hold a lot of cash. That's my biggest thing. For everybody who's making money right now and saving money, stop holding all of it. Put it into, get into speculation, get into something else, put the money somewhere else where it's working for you. Beat inflation, get a life insurance policy, build cash value, get some gold, get some silver while you still can on the cheap. And like I said, get in speculation, get into day trading. That's what the webinar is about at the end of the month. That's why we're doing this right now because everybody needs to be doing this. Yeah. I feel like my thoughts <clears throat> right now are just kind of like, I just feel so bad for the average human because the average human can't even manage like their credit cards and their bills, like keeping all of that shit in track for and sure. in place, let alone having all these different investments accounts right. and learning like what their money is actually doing. Like we've, this concept of money has just gotten so complex that I feel like, I don't know. I just think it's taking away from so much of human life. Like, why oh, are is. humans like even in? But listening, I think it's also the United States. You're biased because I think in other countries, yes, in the United they're States, they're like, "Who cares about money, bro? Whatever. I'm living in, in, the, right. in the hills with my sheep." Right. But even like the way that you were just explaining all of that, how you feel that like you want to be right with your money and you want to have control and you want to know that you're safe, but it's like we live in a world that makes you feel the opposite of that, that you have to feel so strongly the other way that yep. you need to do all these complicated things in many different directions with your money. You know what I mean? And of course, like it's, we should do an episode me, on who started the currencies, me touching into like the emotional side of humans, but yeah. it's like, why isn't it that? Yeah, you have money and you can trust that your money is going to be your money and be there for you. And you don't have to stress about it your entire Probably life. Probably because there's too many humans on this planet, too many bad things going on. You have to be able to be flexible and move. You know what I I'm saying? I think money shouldn't even exist. Yeah, that's, but that's what I'm like, saying. Maybe we need to do an episode on where did money originally start? Who was trading coins originally? What was the first human's name? Joe traded with Ben. Like, what was their names? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not that we would know their actual names, but what were they doing? Where did it come from? How did that idea evolve? Because we've Definitely done research already, just a little bit of research into the money stuff and how currencies have died even here in the United States that people don't even know about. Look up the continental. Just look that up and you'll be mind blown. You'll be like, wow, they tried to fund the war in the United States domestically with a new currency and it didn't work and they printed too much of it and it became worthless and no one knows what it is now. Imagine that. What does that sound like? Interesting. So it's like, open up, like you said back to a couple minutes ago, like, Open up your mind. This could be happening in your lifetime. But as far as the feeling bad, you know, I think you got to hustle for it. I worked my ass off to make some money. Still working my ass off every day. I think it goes back to trade. I feel like that's why money was created due to trade. trade. Because people don't always have something to trade. So they want to have this currency to trade. But that's like, it just makes me feel even sadder for humans. Because it's like, you at least have skills. Learn skills, but so many right. people don't even want to learn what they're actually good at or take the time to put in, I was just going to say, the hard work right. to progress their skills right. to make, you know, whatever trade it is that they needed but to But the happen. system is built against that now. It's built to not have you thinking about learning know, skills. It's it built sucks. to have you working for someone else. I wish I could build my own world. 
Like, I feel like so often I look at our world like that, where I'm constantly like way up here, just looking down in our world. And like, man, I just feel bad. We're making an impact. We're getting people thinking different. People appreciate our videos. And with the money that we have, we're going to be starting charities soon. And I'm working on stuff like that. So I think we're radiating. We're we're pulsing out the energy. I can't get up in a helicopter and just dump my free money out of the helicopter window. You know what I'm saying? I can't. We're not going to do that. But we'll turn around and we try to give back in every way through the courses to teach people how to trade simple systems. Um, I shouldn't say simple, but easy to follow systems once you learn how to trade systems that'll make you money consistently. What do we do? We make YouTube videos to try to bring value. So it's like, don't feel bad. We're doing our part. You know what I mean? We can't hold ourselves back just because other people aren't at the level that we want to be at, you know? And yeah. we're making content for people that have money to invest. We got to remember there are people out there like us that are actually making money. And actually, believe it or not, not a lot of people, but there's some people making more money than us. Some. Oh, absolutely. You know, not a lot, but some. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people out there making more money than hey, us. I, I, Those people that have random houses in Italy off the no, coast, like there's multiples. A, but, hey, listen, we're getting up there. Yeah. We're, there's a, there's not many of those people. That's the thing. So right. as we get higher, the, the, the crowd gets smaller. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But even in our county, when I looked up our percentage of like where our income last year puts us as far as like what percentage, it was high, but I thought it would have been maybe a little higher. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, that was last year too. Yeah, but still. 2020 has been different. No, no, no. That's what I based it off of. Yeah. And I still, yeah, I mean, like, there's a lot of rich people here. <laughs> like, way rich and, like, we're doing all right. They're doing all right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they're all right. Like, capital A L L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just one We just have one A. We just got one A. We're all right with a capital A. You know what I'm saying? But, what again, just to the idea of, like, investments and things like that. Where can I help people? I'm not a financial advisor. We're not a finan- we don't do any of that. We can help with the speculation, but on the invest, I can share my experience. I can sh- you can share your thoughts. We can share what we're going through, what mistakes we make, what good th- stuff we do. Like the life insurance, nobody is talking about that as an investment. We're going to keep screaming about it so people know that we're the ones that started it because it's a great idea. Guarantees with no risk, and it's a deferred savings plan that guarantees you more money in the future, tax free. Look it up. Whole life. <laughs> look it up, people. Cash value life insurance. You want to look up cash flow banking, okay? The crypto stuff, we're not big on it. We're not crypto people. But I think people appreciate that because I'm not out here like, yeah, crypto is the future, yeah. Like, I'm like, no, like, let's be realistic. We don't know, but we can be ready. And then gold and silver, I mean, you could say I'm wrong and you could just be a hater, but time is on my side. Time says that gold and silver have always gone up. And if they tie either of those two to the next currency, whatever happens, they're going to go up. So you're going to want to be there. I think I have a dumb Riley question. Go. Is bronze a metal? It is, but I think it's made of copper. That's what I was just going to say. I feel like Pretty copper, sure. but what else is in it besides copper? Couldn't tell you. I don't know the exact So makeup. like, I don't make does bronze have its own chart or no. would it then just be copper, copper and whatever else? A lot of people say copper is the sleeper because it's so cheap right now. It's like $3. When I was younger, actually, my dad used to sell copper. Hey, if you buy it one and sell it four, how much money did you make? Three. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, that he did that but he did. Who cares? If you, if you buy it one, copper is a dollar an ounce and you sell it for, you made all right. Yeah. If you bought a lot of it, you did all right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, copper's a sleeper. I don't own any copper. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't know enough about that. Yeah. I think it's, that's like, like helium. Matt on his helium investment shit. I'm not on that. I ain't on that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't on that wave. But back to my point to round us out here, the, investments that we make are all based around the idea of being ready for the future and being built to last. And that's why the speculation to me is like the foundation of it. I know it's not um, everybody's cup of tea, but for the people that are still listening this far in our video and the people that are like looking for a good risk reward scenario, and that's who I'm hopefully speaking to in this webinar next weekend, speculation has to be your focus because we need control. We as the people here need to take back control. America. We need to take back control. And speculation does give you the ability to do that if you're doing it the right way. And then you take that money and you can diversify for the future. You don't have to buy index funds like bank rate tells you to do. You don't need to do that anymore. Separate yourself from this stock market that throughout history has done great. But going forward, we don't know. Go to things where we know. Go to an insurance company that's just as old as the stock market, basically. Not at, It's close. Go to one of these insurance companies that's been paying out clients since that long. Same time frame. Can't they're equal then at that point, but one, you're getting a guarantee, a guarantee, right? So it's like, look, and I'm hoping that our conversations open people's mind to look at this differently. There's way better options out there than these stupid treasury things, these stupid high yield savings accounts. Other than your savings, stay out of cash. You need your emergency fund, a little bit on Wells Fargo, 
a little bit on TD. So it's like a little bit in cash. And cash then is it. trash, but cash flow is king. That's it. It's a good place to end. No, we got to do the crystal fact. Oh, yeah, do it. All right, so today's crystal is clear quartz. We're getting blown up. By who? I don't know. Keep going. Checking your phone at a podcast. How rude. So this is clear quartz. Um, kind of looks like a little jellyfish guy, honestly. And some interesting facts about clear quartz. So first, I'll just read like the little description. And then there's some interesting thing about where crystals are actually used in modern day world for those of you that are kind of maybe skeptical about crystals or don't completely understand. So the clear quartz is found all over the world. It's typically like a milky white to clear color and it amplifies the properties of all other crystals. So with that being said, the crystals in technology, I'm just going to read word for word this because it's going to sound better than if I try and summarize it. Quartz crystals have been used in technology since the late 1800s. When the piezoelectric effect was first demonstrated with the crystals, use the crystals to create oscillators that vibrate with highly precise frequency. Quartz has many applications for technological devices that require precision. Devices that employ quartz include sonar, watches, ham radio, and many others. So in military radios in World War II, they actually used quartz oscillators to control the frequency of two-way radio transmissions um, because it was super precise, but it was difficult to mass produce. Also in consumer electronics, according to the Minerals Education Coalition Minerals Resource Database, manufacturers use electronic-grade manufactured quartz in computer circuits, cell phones, and similar equipment. They even report that quartz in its natural form and other, other, I don't know if I'm saying this word right, piezoelectric crystals were used in their raw form to manufacture an experimental rudimentary computer that transmitted or received signals such as randomized sound or light. So I just think that is so fascinating. And they're even in watches, like Rolex watches, you'll see the little quartz in there. Help with precision, help with time, help with accuracy. So I think that is insane that this thing does that how much of it goes into a watch such a little amount i mean obvi- this is huge watches are smaller than this right so small the, i didn't read the little section like how does it go into a, like where in a watch is it um, i'm interested probably in the back all in the watches category it just says due to the precision of quartz oscillators they are used in watches which re- require precision in timekeeping only a tiny tiny piece of quartz is used according to the watch company but it oscillates so precisely that it can be accurate to a few seconds per year wow yeah it's pretty That's incredible interesting. yeah and this also it amplifies other crystals so it's like this is like the holy grail of crystals mm. it cleanses it's you like so- that term holy grail I do. I've been using it a lot lately. It cleanses. It's self-cleansing. It amplifies other energies around it. I'm (laughs) self-cleansing. Cool. So that is today's crystal fact of the day. And we'll use jellyfish as the code word today. Because it looks like a jellyfish? Yeah. Like, you know, when you see them like washed up on the beach when they don't have their tentacles anymore? You can't just say the code word. You got to tell everybody what they have to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I thought about that yesterday. I was like, why do I say it's a code word? Code know. for what? Yeah, nothing. If you watch this far in the podcast. That's all you got to say. All you have to do is comment jellyfish. And Dial then I n- go back and read the comments and reply to you. Dial 999-444-jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool. And if anybody wants to check out where Riley is getting the crystals or the crystal books, we'll put links down. Oh. Allow to cool. Hmm. Okay. Well, for everybody listening, camera just shut off. We appreciate (laughs) you guys listening. We were about to end it anyway, so that works out well. Yeah. We'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.